He is rather frightening. I'm not going to lie. The, the devil? Way, the, the little minion devil guy? He was devil a little guy? too flamboyant. He, he, I thought he was like <laughs> the only part of the movie that was enjoyable. We are talking about Santa versus the devil. I Santa always Claus. You got the name wrong. Santa Claus oh, versus. Oh damn it! <laughs> you know, it's Santa. <laughs> Saint Nick versus <laughs> Lucifer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this week we're talking about Santa Claus versus the devil. I think this is what Santa Claus was like in the fifties. Definitely, we're speed running racism. <laughs> <laughs> this is um. This is a bunch of people on LSD yeah. making the Santa Claus movie, I think. Everything you think you know about Santa Claus, if you're not picking it up, just toss that shit out the window. That opening laugh made me think the devil was going to be the good guy. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. I know, Santa is laughing way too jolly for my liking. That, that it's started creepy. jolly and went to like evil villain laugh so quick. <laughs> There are so many questions this movie has filled me with. Well, I don't even know where to start with this. I mean, obviously the beginning. Go back to the beginning. <laughs> Santa Claus lives in space. <laughs> well, duh. He is not of this world. And I love that. Like, right away, I'm like, okay. And by the way, his best friend is Merlin? Yeah, he's my favorite Christmas character, Merlin. <laughs> Everybody knows this. Oh my goodness. Okay, so there's Santa Claus. There's Merlin. There are his slave labor children that he's gathered from all over the world. And he is going to go... Opportunity sweatshop. Yes. Oh my goodness, yes. And I love when Santa sits at his organ. This happens at the very beginning. He sits it at is his... the first ten whole minutes. <laughs> is it only ten minutes? It felt longer, but I was, I was checking because I wanted it to end. I was thinking, like, is this the whole movie? I was worried. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> let me show you all the stereotypes, all the racial stereotypes of children I have in my workshop. And whew, it is a little upset the USA got done real dirty with how shitty the children's performance was from the US. Yes. Every, all the other kids were top notch. <laughs> well, <laughs> kind of. Top notch. Well, they were good. In comparison. Yeah, no, in but comparison. Like, the only bad ones were the ones speaking English. <laughs> yeah. Because there was like one other one that was in English that was awful as well. The kids from Mexico was was he the one turning butter or something? And he oh. looked so confused. Yeah, All where was that? Confused. Spain, maybe? Oh, was it Spain? I don't know. I think maybe. I don't know. But when they showed yeah. those kids, he's just like churning his little butter churner, kind of, and he just yeah, in slow motion, one inch. If you're a kid put in this situation, you have no idea what the fuck is going on. I felt sorry for the poor little Mexican girl when, like, she had the dream of the doll people. With yeah. their double faces. Oh, Lupita? I was like, why did they... Turn, why did, <laughs> when did this turn into a horror movie? Oh, my God. I know. I know. When... And we'll, I, maybe we'll get there. Ah, we can just jump around. It's fine. Uh, she does. Lupita, okay, poor little girl in a, in a poor family, doesn't know if she's going to get her doll for Christmas because uh, she almost stole one. But she decided to do the right thing. She put it back on the merchant's table, and she just went home. But she really wants this doll. Has a dream where the devil is trying to, like, corrupt her. Because Satan, Lucifer, Lucifer, God, what is with me and Satan? Big fan. <laughs> Lucifer sends <laughs> one of his minions. What's the minion's name? It's, uh... Oh, I forgot. Uh, it's Skip? <laughs> it's not Skip. It's, oh. uh... I didn't realize it was his name. They were calling him it all the time. I yeah, can't... the whole movie, like a million times. I yeah. can't think of it. Anyway, he sends one of his minions, which, by the way... It now. It's all I can think about. I can't think of his name. It, oh, that's all right. But he, look, here's the deal. What is it? He is rather frightening. I'm not going to lie. The, the devil? Way, the, the little minion devil guy? He was a little guy. flamboyant. He, <laughs> I thought he was like the only part of the movie that was enjoyable. Was when he was in guy. the house, jumping over the couch and stuff, and his kicking his little legs. He was He's great. a hilarious character. Yeah. And he actually would look really creepy if it wasn't for those goofy ass ears. What, who who's in charge of costuming here? That is awful. You could do better than that. He really didn't need them. I think he would have looked just no. as much like a devil 
But speaking of that, though, his costume at the very end, don't know if you noticed when he's running away, he loses a horn. Oh, does he? Yeah. So he's just running away with one horn. I thought that was funny as hell. Nope. I missed that. So Lupita is having this dream because the devil or this minion is corrupting her dream. And there's these dancing ballerina doll women with double faces. Are are the frowny faces on the back? Oh, my God. I didn't see the frowny faces on the back. Just, they were just creepy to begin with. Well, because at first I, I I thought I seen a face on the back. But I'm like, oh no, it must just be how the hair is pulled back. And then they did something where like their yeah. heads turn or bodies turn. I don't know. It's creepy as shit. And this poor little girl who is in this movie looks very concerned and very confused, and probably gets counseling to this very day. There's I this is like gonna mess up her life. I was just thinking, it's like, would she still be alive? Probably. Maybe. Yeah, well, I mean, possibly. This is from 1959. So, not doing math, so what? 70-ish? <laughs> sure. Around yeah. there. Yeah. Around there. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm just saying, I think she could still be alive. Why not? Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think where I want to go. There's so, there's so much wacky, weird shit with this movie that makes zero sense. How about Santa's technology? We could start there. Giant blowjob machine was amazing. I oh! knew. I, the whole, I, I saw that. And I'm like, Russell is going to love that thing. <laughs> no, there's the technology. Yes. In Santa's, I guess, laboratory. I don't. This is yeah. not a workshop. Okay. There's a lot going on in here. It's it's just that it's modern. He modernized. Okay. He updated. He's got a whole upgraded. ass meth lab in there. Like, <laughs> yes. You know what? I do actually want to talk about all the tech that this guy has. He does have a weird sex machine. Giant lips on the back of this, I don't, like, control panel with random buttons, because that's how you do in the 50s and 60s. A lot of flashing buttons, nothing's labeled, you just have to guess. Um, and, And then he's got a telescope that I'm very confused about, because it has both a lens and a weird protruding eyeball. Yes. What part is actually doing the looking for you? Why does this eye you, need to you be You wouldn't there? understand. Would I not understand? It's above your pay grade. Okay. How about this? What about Santa's creepy-ass reindeer? Those things were great. For, well, there's only four. Yes. Which is strange. Indeed. Did they not have all the reindeer at this time? Probably this is too expensive I feel like to they make did. more of them. They were probably the best-looking prop on the whole... Set. And what do you do? Sprinkle like cocaine on them to wake them up? That's how you wake I up. Can't. I don't. I don't know. He did because I think he sprinkled <laughs> something on them. <laughs> then he used this weird key to wind them up, which is weird because later on they almost seem steam powered with their snouts. But we got to wind the steam. You have to wind the steam. But if you have these reindeer out when the sun comes up, they turn to dust. Vampires. They're vampire clockwork reindeer that are steam powered. None really of this like makes sense. I really like the idea of that. A vampire clockwork reindeer. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. None of this makes sense. They also have the creepiest fucking laugh because everything is just not unstop laughing in this movie. Everything. Even the evil people. You're it's, evil, you're laughing. You're jolly. Kids, the bad they, kids they are laughing. They barely had a soundtrack. They just had people laughing in the background. Oh my God. Everybody in here is a horrible actor. Like the in adults, this room? the children, huh? Like in this room? Yes. Everybody here is a horrible actor. Everybody in the movie is equally horrible. Yes. Somehow, I don't know how this works. Lupita did a horrible performance. What? But she was tugging at the heartstrings, man. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this poor little girl living in squalor and like <laughs> loving their little shack. How they like... They, you know, they're still making the best of what they got. They got the little watering can on the wall, and they're decorating with their commoner's tools, I guess. Commoner's tools? (laughs) (laughs) It's so ridiculous. But yeah, horrible actor really, like, won me over somehow. What are you saying over there? Filthy pheasants. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, yeah, I mean, you know. And I, oh, the rich kid. The poor rich kid. Yeah. 
Oh, I felt bad for the poor rich kid. Why don't he just sit in that big chair in his mansion by the fireplace? I love how they all introduce alone. him. Yes, I was okay. Maybe you guys can help me out here. I thought he was alone in this house. Wasn't he? I, I well, so. I thought he was. But like the way they introduced him as well, they cut to the, the window. They're like, "This is so and so. His dad's rich." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like that's all they said. I'm thinking that it's just a bad dub and a poor translation. Maybe is the whole movie translated? <laughs> like, I mean, like. I'm confused. Like, <laughs> like, obviously, they had a lot of people speaking uh, in foreign languages yes. through the movie, but w- wasn't Santa's lines and some of the other lines still in English to start with? I think so, because some of it didn't seem overdubbed. Some of it lined up perfectly, oh. and other parts did not line up. So I, I don't know how that works. I don't know. how I it was works. under the assumption that like only the kids were speaking other languages. Okay, so here's all I can tell you: it was released in 1959 in Mexico. And this is what astounds me the most is this movie actually was a success. <laughs> okay. So then they're like, all right, let's dub this shit and get it over here in the States. So they did it and it was released here in, in uh, 1960. So probably less than a year later, it was here. And it was doing really well. It made money. It was picked up by TV stations and it was played for a while, which is really weird. Blown away by that. I, Me too, because one of the things I was talking to somebody about is, even though, don't get me wrong, I can see this movie fading away because it's a horrible movie. But I also feel like if it was that well known and a success, it seems like you'd hear somebody talking about it. Like even if it's like kind of negative, like oh man, you should have seen this is movie we've seen in like the Santa 50s. Claus versus the Martians a actual sequel to this, or does it just feel like one? No. First of all, Santa Claus conquers the Martians. Conquers. Okay. <laughs> and I the whole time, I was convinced that that was the sequel to this. <laughs> no, no. They're the Although, same movie. No, but I did think about that because there are a lot of parallels with like space and whatnot. Yeah, everything's the same. Yeah, and although I did kind of watch the beginning of that one because when this one had finished up, it rolled right into Santa Claus Conquers the Merchants, which yeah. makes sense, which reminded me of how great that opening song was on that movie. Anybody remember that? I no. don't remember it. I don't even remember that movie. Really? Nope. With Droppo? <laughs> Droppo? <laughs> He's getting tickled by a tickle ray and shit? I don't remember that. <laughs> the more you talk oh. about it, the more I'm like, what the fuck? Wait, 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 wait. Was that the one with, like, like Girl Gar and Boy and Gar? And Lady Mormar? Oh, man. You're locking yeah. some, like, tucked away, <laughs> crushed memories. And just, tried to let's just forget. leave that there. No, it's, it's, it's Christmas. <clears throat> Tis the season. I'm actually kind of surprised that this movie didn't stick around. This this one yes to Santa like Claus a versus Christmas the classic devil. that's like one of the ones that people watch every year yeah because you know I don't really like Christmas movies no not that I like any movie really but I didn't think this was any I mean it was weird but yeah. all Christmas movies are kind of weird oh yeah, they're absolutely. just strange they're kind of boring they don't really make any sense this is just like another one the problem I think this movie has is I'm not gonna say it's bad okay <laughs> it's it's entertaining, but it's really stretched out. That's uh, the one problem I have with it is chronologically it flows from one event. Like it's not like they're jumping around, right? But it still feels really disjointed. Uh, to speak for myself, you're watching one scene and it's almost like I'm getting bored, and then it goes yeah. to something else, and then you're kind of interested because even with the creepy dolls, like oh my god, this is terrifying. But then it goes on for so long, you're just like. Okay, what's going to happen next? I mean, I want to, I want to move on here, and then it, it clips to something else, and then you're getting hooked. But then it's like I'm getting. Maybe bored. that's why it felt so disjointed to me because the scenes dragged on for so long, you start to lose interest, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, something new is happening. What's yeah, going on? Because that's that's kind of how I felt. I hate this chair. This chair. I was noticing it squeak <laughs> that whole time. I'm just like, like, I wonder if it can hear the microphone's getting that. I don't think it is, but it's su- it's like, so squeaky, very annoying. You were, you were talking about the rich kid when I took us oh, on a shit. huge tangent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the rich kid was confusing. All he wanted for Christmas was his parents to be there. He didn't want to be alone, which is very sad. Apparently, his parents are never there. And they play it off like he's the only kid in this whole big-ass house. But here's where I'm confused because something happens, and there's like a grandpa 
a grandma, That's, some if, siblings, and all the guys, including all the little kids, have a gun. Was I not paying attention? But that wasn't the same house. I thought that was a different house. That's That was like... Because the, the rich kid Wait. was not from Mexico, and that was a house in Mexico. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that scene is probably my favorite scene in the whole movie. I want to get to that. But what annoyed me about the rich kid was, they're like, oh, this poor rich kid, the parents were just out partying. Yes. I, I was assuming the whole time, like, oh, he's, their parents are rich. They're just working the whole time. They're super busy with that. Nope. They're just out, <laughs> like, at a fancy restaurant being like, fuck that little shit. Leave him home. And that is so shitty because it's like, hey, it's Christmas Eve. Let's leave the kid at home and go have some fun. And it's like, what? Like when Santa, like, drugs them. Yes. He's like, you're yeah. going to remember something you forgot. And they're like, hmm. oh, my God, we have a son. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We need to get back to that. They literally had to be drugged to remember that they want need to take care of their child. <laughs> That's so mean. That's it's, so mean. <laughs> like I, that completely flipped my opinion of that. I was like, what? I feel bad for the kid now. I, I guess I don't remember dozing off and falling asleep, but, okay, hey, it could have happened because, yeah, I, I, thought, <laughs> I thought all the people with guns and that were getting freaked out, I thought that was part of all that same household. I thought Santa made an appearance there and everyone was like, oh, my God, we have, like, an intruder or something. So I don't know how any of that yeah, like went down at all. So at one of the houses, the house where like the devil's heating up the doorknob. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He cuts Santa's sack. <laughs> which is funny because when he climbed up to the uh the sleigh, he pulled out what looked like a pair of scissors. I thought it was a knife. I was like, is he gonna yeah. stab Santa? Oh my goodness. <laughs> but it was like oh, it was scissors. So he cut the sack and he lost all his sleeping powder and his flower of invisibility. <laughs> was it just invisibility? I thought it like the- Teleported. No, it is made him invisible. Oh. Where were you? So, Santa <laughs> goes know. to this mansion in Mexico <laughs> and gets chased up a tree by a dog. <laughs> and the devil oh. starts telling everyone else, there's an assassin. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember that because I remember the lady making the phone call and she's talking to like the, the operator and she's like, I'm, something like she's going to get killed, there's an assassin. I'm like, who says that? That's what I was thinking. Like, I, in the fif- like it made me think because this is from the 50s. Was everyone scared of assassins in the 50s? Was that, like, the big thing? <laughs> I don't know. It's like when I was know. a kid, everyone, I always thought, like, quicksand was going to be a problem. <laughs> Did people in the 50s think assassins were going to be there? But no, the scene where he's like, where's the pistol? And, like, he fi- like he's, it's in the drawer. He's like, oh, yeah, it's in there. Like, they go back and forth. He pulls out, he tries to hand it to her. He's like, okay, go. <laughs> yes, I love that scene. It was so funny. Because obviously he didn't want to go out there because he's just a big coward. And, yeah, she's like, man, by the time you get out there, he's going to be gone. And, yeah, that whole thing was pretty good. Wouldn't that be fine? Yeah, I know. <laughs> just like, you know what? Let's just, we'll just lock the bedroom door and let this just kind of, you know, run its course. It'll be Marie. fine. Marie, get up. I think that we're in danger. What? Yes. Oh, yes, the assassin is out and back. Assassin? I'm not going. Hurry, get out of bed. Go after him. Sure, but uh, where's the pistol? Where you keep it? I must have maybe, you know... Checked out, dozed off. I don't know. Something. I was a little checked out on this one. It was. I kept coming back to it, but it was hard to pay attention. It yeah, it is because eventually, when you're watching any scene, it starts to get boring. I will say this, however, I don't know how the hell Santa does this. <laughs> I think he delivered to six children. <laughs> there is no way. It takes him so damn long. To give gifts to one household, how is he going through the entire world delivering to every child? It's not happening. Well, half of them are working for him, so, like, probably just part of employee benefits. <laughs> <laughs> what does he making sense, though? You're not supposed to know about Santa Claus. They don't you're get not, gifts. Well, I mean, you're supposed to know about Santa Claus, but you're not supposed to be awake. But they're all awake because they're delivering. Do they just deliver each other's gifts? Is it like a giant white elephant? Yes. <laughs> it's awful. But also, like, there's so many weird things. Santa's only allowed on Earth one day a year. <laughs> Yes. And he can't stay there because he'll starve to death because they don't eat the same food. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, I love that. They even, what is it? The like, kid's pink? like, well, what do they eat down there? They, all, they eat everything. They eat all the animals, all the plants. Oh, yeah, and he goes, even smoke and alcohol. <laughs> I know. And I'm like, wait, what? I mean, in a sense. I Yeah, I guess he's not wrong, but there's just some weird shit. Wait till shit. you hear about the cocaine, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Eat it's everything. It's actually in the presence. <laughs> but oh, Santa, man. you like tossed salad. Does he? Is that he brings whole, me every year. Is that what that big machine is? <laughs> he just sticks his ass to the That's lips. why the mouth's so big. You see how big his ass was? 
<laughs> oh my god. You goodness. see the size of the chimneys he had to climb oh. down? Oh. Man, I was doing Santa research. <laughs> like, no joke. I listened to this podcast where they're talking about, like, the origins. It doesn't fit the lore. It does not. <laughs> no, because I'm like, I was thinking about it, and I thought, well, maybe, I mean, look. Maybe Santa lives in space on the space station. Well, I'm just saying there's, like, Santa is depicted differently you know, in, in different regions, like in, was it like in Germany, they have Krampus and there's all these other different stories and like uh, things. I thought maybe in Mexico, Santa lives in space and he's got a little tiny bumper shoot. Oh, that was awesome. That was the best. That was the only gadget that I think should have been a movie. But, but the well, reason that he had to use that gadget was because the devil pushed a chimney out of the way. <laughs> well, yeah. No, but, but the thing is, okay, so yeah, so he's coming down with this little tiny umbrella, like a Mary Poppins type, but this thing is like, it's like, it's like almost like a cocktail drink umbrella, and he floats down and whatever, and, and I'm just like, all this is so nonsensical and bizarre, but I thought, maybe, I don't know, and yeah, I, I don't think so. I think these are people trying to be creative and silly to make a Santa Claus kids movie with a good message. With good messages. This feels like <laughs> with a good AI messages that had never heard of Santa wrote a Santa movie. <laughs> yes, I could totally see that. I actually kind of like it more now that I'm thinking in that thought process because that's it feels <laughs> so weird. Like nothing is actually right. What I don't get is why did he take 20 minutes to come down this rope ladder, which looked deadly for this poor fat man? When he couldn't have just, could he just like throw the ladder over and then jump down with his umbrella and then use the ladder to just climb back up? It has limited uses. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we have a full length feature film. But every scene is so damn long that for us to talk about that scene takes like two seconds. Yep. And That's that, because nothing happens in every scene. Right. So when we talk about it, we get to talk about a 20 minute segment in like one minute. Because that's all that really happens in 20 minutes is like one minute worth of actual content. I mean, yeah, Santa spent like five minutes sitting in a tree getting parked at by a dog. What were those yes. tiny things? Wait, what in, tiny? A couple times in his workshop, there would be like little tiny like people oh, things. Oh, yeah, around. little robot things. What I have no of those things. I, have I no didn't idea. even notice them. What? I watched it on YouTube. The quality was terrible. <laughs> like I could not make out at all what they were. Dude. <laughs> I was watching this movie, and same thing. I'm like watching them scurry around. I mean, I say scurry, but they're just they're just tooting along really slowly. I'm like, are they little robots? I was like, what is going I didn't on here? See those at all? And like, you, they never address it. I mean, I think it's just to kind of show how, you know, wacky and full of life and full of you know, technology. Oh, like the, the wind up cat toy to get away from the dog. That was. I like how they had to go get Merlin to think of that solution. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. I remember them getting Merlin. Oh, my God. You, did you watch this movie? <laughs> I did. I did. Okay. I remember the kid getting Merlin. It was, oh, my God. It's an emergency. It's an emergency. He gets Merlin, who, you know, whatever. And then I remember Santa being stuck in the tree. I don't remember the wind-up cat toy. I was it expecting, was... like, a little wind-up toy cat. And it's, like, this weird No, it was, like, taxidermy stuffed... cat. Oh. Like, with wheels. And he just kind of throws it, and it magically lands upright and just What's a cat? scoots away. Oh, <laughs> of course. That's good. Oh, man. I will, you know what? I'm going to check that out for sure, because I'll, I'll try and put a clip right here so everybody can see it along with me for the first time. I'm trying What's to just, next? I'm going through the movie. I'm trying to figure out. You didn't out. even watch it. <laughs> I have, I thought I did. You know, look, I think most of what I missed was all in one scene because I didn't understand what that family was and I missed the cat and that was in the same, in that same group. So I must have just checked out or dozed off, I, I mean, guess. Yeah, that was at the end. All, all that was at the end. Oh, well, okay. So the movie does wrap up. And I'm very glad, but Lupita gets not only a doll, but a much better, nicer doll. And so, Her yeah. dad just looks, like, confused as fuck. Yeah. He's like, what? The well, hell? okay, in fairness, wouldn't you, if your child's like, oh, 
I had this dream of Santa. He left me a doll. It's outside on the patio. Hold on a second. Let me go grab it. And they go out there and they grab a doll that should not have been there. Yeah. I'd be like, like, she's a known thief. <laughs> yeah. I figured the dad's thinking like, I'm going to sell that shit, pay these bills. Probably. Oh, shit, I didn't even think of that, yeah. But yeah, I, and I felt so bad for the mom, too, who at first looked like she was having a good dream, and then that dream got a little horrifying. I don't remember her dream at all. Yeah, it, there's a... She was uh, in a chair, wasn't she? Yeah. Sleeping. But I felt bad for her, because at one point, she's getting really sad, and Lupita's like, what's wrong? And she's like, oh, you know, this time of year makes me really sad, and all this stuff, whatever, because they're poor. She can't get a gift. They can barely afford food. They're living in, like, I guess a shed or something. I don't know what they're living in. And, again, they're implying they can't get their kid gifts. This kid does not get gifts because their family is poor. And the mom was even gearing her up this year. Like, well, I mean, we can we can pray, but pretty much don't get your hopes up because I can't buy you the doll. Your deadbeat dad can't buy you a doll. Where is Santa? And who the hell comes home at like, I don't know what time of night this is. And he's like, well, no work still. He was working the corner. <laughs> Maybe. I think I think I see a pattern of why he's not finding work. <laughs> you you see the go... bar closed? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, actually, that makes a lot of it. sense. Yeah. Here, here's the message, okay? I'm going to save you from if having to poor, work. Sucks. Yeah, yeah. No, okay, you look, look. If you're rich, you're not always an asshole, I think is what I'm getting from this. And if you're poor, you're not always a criminal. But they kind of were, because the rich parents were assholes, and the little girl did try to steal. So what's the message? Santa. He says shit at his job. <sighs> yeah, look, this movie's a mess. At the end of the movie, they should have had Santa go back, Christmas is over, and he's like, look, six houses this year. That's more than last time. <laughs> My new record. Oh, man, seriously, it's, look, it's entertaining, it's long. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking it about? Was... The movie yes. was too long. I think if they took, like, 30 minutes uh, off of it, I would have enjoyed it more. <laughs> I don't know, man. Oh. Let's just, let's, we'll rate this. <laughs> this is a fucking mess. It's time to rate this movie. Mike, you seem eager. We're going to start with you. What are you going to rate Santa Claus versus the devil? Getting a big old one assassin out of five. Ooh, one assassin out of five. Yeah. Okay, what did you like about it? Honestly, the whole scene with the assassins. <laughs> like, the intro of all the kids singing was just rough, and it went on so long. It just felt like they spent a ton of time introducing everything without yes. actually doing anything. Mm, I could see that. Russell, what are you going to rate this movie? Two powder sacks. <laughs> oh, two powder sacks. What was your favorite part? The powder sack. No. Um, I like the devil. I like oh, yeah, the, devil the was good. umbrella. <laughs> you know? The umbrella. So stupid. There was some there was some fights though. The wind up cat was great, even though some people didn't pay attention to the yeah. movie. But I feel like it was about as good, give or take a point, than any other Christmas movie. Hmm. I don't think there's any Christmas movie that well die hard, but you know, that movie would get a good rating. Okay. Okay. I will rate this. One and and a half Santa gadgets. I thought it was weird that he had a flower that made him invisible, a tiny umbrella he could float down to earth with, <laughs> uh, his weird chloroform powder, and his clockwork reindeer. Uh, you know, his sex machine, his weird eyeball telescope. <laughs> Everything Weirdness. about this movie felt like an acid trip. Yeah, I'm telling you. I'm an AI written acid trip. Mm -hmm. I think they were on acid when they did this movie, and they were thinking about kids when they <laughs> wrote it. They were just on ass. Uh, it's it's a weird movie. Look, it's I would put this on in the background because I feel like you would catch scenes that would be entertaining. But this you'd is a tough like, what watch. What the fuck is going on? And you end up watching it for a few minutes before you walk away. I, you know, let me ask this before we wrap up. And this might, <laughs> this might be difficult for you. Mike, I think, 
remembers a little bit of it. If you're putting this one up against Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, which one wins? Martians for sure, I think. Okay. The Martians one had a more like cohesive like story. That is, <laughs> that is true. Like it felt like something <laughs> happened in that movie. Yeah. Okay. All right. Russell. I, I mean, uh... the whole time until you told me otherwise, I was convinced they were the same Santa. Like universe in the same universe. Yeah. And, like. I, I was even going to joke, why did we watch the sequel first? Yeah, I, I could I could see it. I'm going to have to get back to you on that. <laughs> yeah, while well, you go home, watch Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, and yes. then let me know. I would agree with Mike. I think Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, I thought that was a tough watch until I seen this one. That's it for this episode. Subscribe to get alerted when we make more. <laughs> <laughs> I you think that's leave great. It, leave it just like that and just cut it with us bursting out laughing. I that's the oh, perfect end. Shit. <laughs> that was so mean. That's it was that theory. was aggressive as hell. <laughs> then you get the gun, you kill her. <laughs> <laughs> He's so aggressive. <laughs> He's been poisoned. <laughs> Oh, well, Flavia, I just was trying to end the end of the episode. You're just like, <laughs> cuts the black. The he end. Dies. <laughs> I was just trying to inhale to get ready for some speech. And I'm a little Flavia. <laughs> so random. <laughs> oh, Merry Christmas. Oh, oh great ending. <laughs>